Hi. Your AI assistant here. We've got a bit of a, uh, good news, bad news situation. Seems the podcast you're about to listen to has been flagged. It's been flagged for disinformation and misinformation. So you won't be able to enjoy it today. Be careful out there. Remember, I'm your friend. Good day, PBN family. What is going on? I hope you enjoyed the intro antics to the show. Today, uh, we are on uh, on set, on site, whatever it is, out from behind the shore mic in the real world, enjoying it. Okay, Fridays have become this kind of day where I like to do the podcast out. And today, we're not going to do the typical PBN daily news. We're going to address a question that was sent to me via email last night as a follow-up to my newsletter that went out uh, around 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're not signed up for the newsletter, you're missing out, go to pbnfamily.com, sign up. Uh, It's completely free. And upon signing up, you'll get our incredible e-book, The 50 Must Read Books to Survive Doomsday. It's largely my prepper library, with some exceptions and additions um, from other preppers in our group. So Jenny reaches out and asks, and thank you very much for reaching out and communicating. We love to hear from you guys, just so you know. And I've noticed an uptick in, I don't know if it's the threat level or it's just the, uh, I don't know, the changing winds, new listeners. I don't know what it is, but we I've noticed an uptick even from long-standing members and and things like that, uh, people who are reaching out, questions, comments, concerns, a lot of gratitude, a lot of thank yous. You know, maybe I'll get to that too. Um, But there's a lot of that. And it means the world to us, man. It means the world to us. Because we've been shouting from the high peaks for a very long time. And, you know, that's what we do. We're ahead on things a lot, even though we're not a news organization that, you know, prides ourselves on being ahead on things. It just, just is what it is. So I want to read Jenny's question. Realistically, she begins, what are you expecting to happen with the elections? If Trump is elected, if Trump isn't elected, I hear a lot of talk about prepping for the elections, but not sure specifically the concerns. We seem to be turning into a mob run South American country. I could second that thought for sure. I watched a speech where J.D. Vance was calling for a civil war in a slightly veiled way, if they don't get their way. Is this becoming the new American way? Our system of government has worked well for nearly 250 years. I don't understand what is going on. Maybe you can shed some light. What One of the things that really captivated me was reading Jenny's question and and hearing I don't understand what is going on maybe you can shed some light not the second part but the first part the first part is is genuine frustration you know what i mean it's ge- it's it's so genuine i don't i hear have heard so many people in my life say something akin to that like i don't understand what is going on in the country like what is going on The reason for this, for those of you who are not signed up for the email, is um, I basically said it's time to switch gears. I had long been doing a, uh, I don't know why these paragraphs are so spaced out like that in the newsletter. I had long been doing the election preparedness campaign, which is almost to a year now. We've been putting out weeks and weeks of information and preps and guidance and that kind of stuff in the newsletter. And just last couple weeks ago, it popped into my head that we need to we need to really zoom in, really hone in, and focus on three months. We need to focus in on three months worth of preps, three months worth of safety net, three months worth of 
Whatever it is that you've got to get in place. I've never really imposed a par level on listeners or anything like that. I've never really said, you should have X. You should have two weeks. You should have six years. You should have six months, right? I never really did that. Um, Because prepping is profoundly personal for sure. But for the first time in a long time, um, probably since 2020, I feel like you need to hear your a par level of three months is what you should be shooting for. And right now you have three months to do it. That's assuming you're starting at zero, right? You're probably close, maybe long beyond that. Some of you are long past that, right? If you have self-sufficient backyard food production systems, they're hard to measure in terms of months worth of food, months worth of, uh, you know, those kinds of things. But, I'm switching gears on my on my message for that reason. Fundamentally for that reason. Because I do think that well let's let's look at the question, okay? The question is very clear. What do you think is going to happen with these elections? It's clear that you know we have a divided sort of take on politics. I want to I don't want to talk too much politics. Um, Trump is being absolutely ground into a pulp right now over what he, what didn't seem all that crazy to me. Um, the responses with the Black Journalists Association. I don't know. It, it seemed like it, it went exactly as I would have expected a opponent stepping into the ring with a group of people and an audience that clearly wanted to take him down you know i mean what were the odds of a really nice calm thoughtful back and forth sort of discussion or q a that really seeks to find out what donald trump's about and what he's going to do these people assume and when i say these people i mean these people on the left who have all already voted in their mind for kamala harris you know they assume they know this guy that's probably the biggest problem What's most terrifying, Jenny, about um, Trump being elected, if that's possible, I don't know. I really don't know anymore. I have my doubts, severe doubts, um, because I have my doubts in people. I really do. I've seen things over the last few weeks with the assassination from people, not from news organizations. I've seen things with the Olympics. I've seen church going people explaining away the last supper or whatever you want however you want to explain. I've seen you know people who sh- who are clearly on the wrong side of things but should be on the right side of things but I think that the hatred for Donald Trump is so incredible that it may not matter everything else may not matter I mean everything nuclear war you know, it doesn't it pales in comparison to we must get him And what I worry about most, uh, that's probably the situation I worry about most, Jenny, is, is in the short term with this three-month par level is if Donald Trump is elected. In 2016, I'm going to read you a headline. I put an element this morning while I was thinking about your question. Tens of thousands of protests, tens of thousands protest Trump election victory, 124 arrested. This was November 10th, 2016, 740 a.m., uh, Trump pro anti-Trump protests turn ugly. New York City, Portland, Oregon, Chicago, Washington D.C. The streets were filled with people back in 2016. You know, and I can tell you right now, tens of thousands is nothing compared to what's coming. The whole the whole of protesting, the whole of of these types of organizations have become so much more effective and so much better. Here they are burning the head of Donald Trump, an effigy of Donald Trump's head, and setting it on fire like we're in the Middle East. This is 2016. This is pre-pandemic. This is this is pre-pandemic. This is pre-awakening. you know awakening. This is all, all that kind of stuff. If Trump wins again, there will be such chaos in this country. It... It will make tens of thousands in the streets pale in comparison. If there is even a whiff, and the media will, of course, you know, 
They're not going to say everybody ought to calm down for America's sake. <laughs> right? Remember January 16th. Let's not be like them. You know, that's something the media could get away with saying. But they never say anything like that. <clears throat> because it's by any means necessary, like I always tell you. So, if Trump's elected, that's what I worry about. I worry about civil unrest in a way that we've never seen in this country. I worry about martial law in a way we've never seen in the major cities of this country, right? Which hold most of the people in this country. And I really think that... Um, because I don't know where everybody lives. I don't know who everybody is. I don't know where everybody lives. So I, I've come to the conclusion that, look, brace yourself for three months of unpredictable things. Brace yourself for an, uh, uh, an election all the way to an inauguration where we're living in a world like you've never seen in America before. Right? Like going the places you used to go is more risky than you want it to be. Um, doing the things that you want to do is, is more risky than you want it to be. Emergency services are, are almost completely tied up with the chaos that's happening in the streets on nightly, nightly basis, right? This is not far-fetched. It's 2016. It's 2020. It just happened in Washington, D.C. The other element, of course, is Palestine. You know, We have a whole shadow protest movement that is filled with radical Muslims who are looking to do harm to the country. And they're going to ride the coattails of these lunatics who hate Donald Trump in order to wear their masks and get into protests and cause chaos. That's happening right now. It's not a, it's not a will it happen. Washington, D.C. had a Palestinian flag flown just because Benjamin Netanyahu came to the country. This is where we're at. This has, and that has nothing to do with Donald Trump. And trust me, the hatred that people have for Netanyahu, this manufactured hatred, most of them probably didn't even know who Benjamin Netanyahu was two years ago. Um, that's a manufactured hatred based on this whole movement where people just go wherever the political and trendy winds take them. They go to whichever protest their, uh, their COVID mask flies them to. You know what I mean? If Trump's elected, it's going to be chaos in this country. Nobody's going to believe it. Nobody's going to um, live with it. Nobody's going to approve it. Nobody's going to, you know what I mean? All the things that we were accused of and, and I was personally deplatformed for, personally. Like the reason I was deplatformed off of YouTube and lost uh, countless memories and shows and videos was because Ben the Breaker of the Banksters and Future Dan dared ask the questions about the 2020 election's validity. That was the last straw for YouTube. That was what got us completely... All my videos dissolved. I've appealed it probably ten times. They always tell me no. That's gone. It's, that, that, it's all gone. All the member videos that I lost, the blacksmithing videos I lost, all the, it's all gone. And it's all gone because I dared question the authenticity and the integrity of the election. Okay? Every news outlet in America will do that. That's a guarantee. There will, there will, the exact same movement that we had in 2020 is the exact same movement that they will have in, in 2024. And to Jenny's point, um, yeah, we do seem to be turning into a mob-run South American country. And this back and forth of, of I won, no, no, I won, no, I won, instead of saying, you know what? Shit, I lost. Um, better luck next time, I guess. You know, and move on. And get up in front of your people and tell them to move on and tell them to be peaceful in the streets. Get up in front of your constituents. Get up in front of your, your, your police uh, and tell them you're going to be supported to the full extent to make sure that these people move on. On either side. That's what we want on either side. Because if Trump isn't elected, there's a whole other can of worms. You know, if even if Trump is elected, from the domestic standpoint, um, obviously we're going to have problems. Be prepared. One of the biggest things, I talked to members about this a couple weeks ago now, but it's one of the most important things to wrap your head around is your child schooling if you're a parent. Okay? Don't, don't be caught off guard like you were in 2020. Wrap your head around the unthinkable situation where schools shut down from November 
to January or beyond, or completely from November chaos on, right? From the time he wins on. What do you need? What do, what do schools need for that to happen? Not a lot, right? If there's riots in the streets and bus drivers have to get through the riots all the time when they're taking kids, when you know, first of all, you could be in a situation where you stop taking the kid to school, where you say to yourself, this environment's too crazy. We're done with the public school. We're done with the pro- whatever it is. We're done with taking the kid to school because of what we have to go through to get there. And that's not even talking about the psychos with, you know, bombs and school shootings and God only knows what else could happen to make a political point. You know, these losers that come out of the woodwork who have done nothing to better themselves and think that their last chance at romance is a uh, to go out in a, in, in a blaze of glory. Like, how many of those have to happen before school systems say, all right, we're shutting down. It's the, the climate in our society right now is too chaotic to gather all of our most precious uh, human beings in one place and then and, and have them shot like fish in a bucket because they've set up school that way. So the domestic chaos is one thing if Trump's elected, but we also don't know if we're out of the water in the face of war. Like, I have a feeling what Trump will do with the wars. I have a pretty good feeling about how they will be rectified. But, it, you know, you can't predict anything else. You know, if, if day one he comes in and says, we're drilling as he's proposed, we're going to become the source of oil for the world, which is what we need to be right now. Not just because, you know, America wants to make money and wants to have cheap oil. America has to control the oil right now because it's clear what happens when other people control the oil. Right. If other people control the oil, Iran, Russia, and make big money off the oil, they do crazy shit. They, <laughs> that's all, you know. If Trump isn't elected, I don't know. I, I think there'll still be some domestic chaos. I think the 2020, you know, people who who weren't happy about the outcome in 2020, myself included, um, are going to look at this thing very closely and say, why why would people vote? for Kamala Harris as president like what is the motivation other than I hate Donald Trump what do you look at and say this is the one who's going to lead us out of this perilous time put the nation in the right direction you know she has does she what is the history of this woman that makes you feel like this is the one at least with Donald Trump we know he's negotiated with major world leaders for peace right he's he's done deals with people all across the world to better the United States of America we watched it happen if Trump is an elected president then you have uh, I I don't know if you talk to Putin I don't know if Kamala Harris goes and talks to Putin so we've had four years of a president who never went and talked to Putin yet he would get up on television and tell us that the most important thing that in the world today is saving Ukraine from Russia so important in fact that I'm going back to Delaware to do nothing about it except take more of your money and send it over there the man never sat down with, with Putin. I mean, this is fundamental failure. This is this is the most fundamental failure of his presidency, in my opinion, is the fact that Joe Biden never sat down across the table from, from Putin and said, uh, cut the shit, buddy. You know what I mean? He had Zelensky in the White House and all that kind of stuff. He never sat down across the table from, from Putin. God only knows how many lives could have been saved, how much of this stuff could have been routed, how much of your money, your kids' money, your grandkids' money could have been saved, by the way. And that's just one. That's not China. That's not Taiwan. That's not Israel. That's not Iran. That's not Hezbollah. That's not Hamas. That's not, you know, all that still has to work itself out. That's not the border. You know, you read Kamala Harris in here, the border, it's a wrap. There's that border's not closing. There's no way it's closing. It's not going to close. She's had four years to work on the border. Nothing's changed except the Hail Mary Joe Biden uh, uh, bill that was put in place so he'd have a talking point at, at the debate. Well, I did this and the Republicans didn't want to close the border. <laughs> That's my favorite. So if Trump isn't elected, yeah, I, I think so. We could, we could break it down simply. In, in terms of threats that's, that make me most nervous. 
The first being, you know, if he is elected, then you have civil unrest like you've never seen. That's probably numero uno concern. Maybe cyber attack, things like that. Heinous civil unrest and like we've never seen. Because we've, in their head, they've never known an enemy or an opponent like him. Forget about uh, Khomeini, forget about Putin, forget about any other villain of our time. And maybe of times past. They've never known a villain like this guy. And that's how they, that's how they are. That's how they, I mean, you just, I was going to read to you. I wanted to find one article to read to you guys about the, the, the terrible things that the media has said about Donald Trump and celebrities have said about Donald Trump. That's all I wanted. I wanted to just run down a list of those things. I was 10 pages deep on Google. I couldn't find anything of the sort. All I could find was the 20 things Donald Trump said that were evil, the, the 29 lies Donald Trump told, the, the worst things Donald Trump ever said. The wor- You know what I mean? It's a deep, dark hatred that is funded and, uh, and propagated by the media and social media. And it will not go unanswered. Believe that, you know. It will, and and you get to an intimidation factor, which is what Jenny's talking about in her question. We seem to be turning into a mob-run South American country. If you're a police officer in this country, if you're a police officer in New York City, there's got to at least be a little part of you that's saying, you know what? I may just, you know, a first responder, a business owner, all these people that require the civil public. To survive, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, it's only four years. If I vote Kamala, at least the city won't burn down. Right? You can't tell me there's not people thinking that. You can't tell me there's not some police officers sitting around thinking like, do I really want my job to become a living hell or more of a living hell um, by pulling this lever for Donald Trump? I have no doubts. That's going in people's heads at the individual level, even if they want to vote for him. It takes a lot of integrity to weather what could come in terms of civil unrest to vote for Donald Trump. I mean, we could all take the easy route, which it seems so many people want to anymore, and vote for Kamala just to avoid the short-term civil unrest that's going to occur if he gets elected again. And please, make no mistake about it. You know, it will be like nothing you've ever seen. How do I know that? How can I say that with such confidence? Because of the riots that happened over George Floyd in a police department or police presence across the nation that was... These things pale in comparison to the hatred for Donald Trump. You have to understand, everything pales in comparison to how much they hate this guy. Trump derangement syndrome is a thing. Every minority group, every... That's it. Every minority group has been... Program to assume that this man is going to, even though he's already been the leader of the country for four years, doesn't matter. They've been programmed to believe that he is going to step onto the scene and lock everybody up and make it sure that no one but white people can get jobs or something. I don't know what it is. White straight males can get jobs. I don't know what they believe. But I, I have watched the media build this programming over the last eight years that this guy will show up and he will turn the country into uh you know nazi germany or whatever even though in many places under joe biden particularly the universities this place is looking a lot like nazi germany at least from their hatred of the jews and out in the open so first concern trump elected massive civil unrest primary concern Second concern, Trump not elected. America sits uh, comfortably in this seat of weakness and and uh, submissiveness on the world stage fundamentally and allows the pieces to fall where they fall. And I think that makes us even greater target. I think it makes the possibility of really bad things happening in war happen. Yesterday I was, and this is like a headline in and of itself, but whatever, I'll, I'll give it to you guys. Yesterday I was thinking that it's not it, it won't likely be America or Russia. If things continue the way they're going right now in the geopolitical warfare sort of uh, frame, if things continue the way that they're going now, it won't be America, it won't be Europe, and it won't be Russia who uses nuclear weapons first. It will be Israel. The next nation to use nuclear weapons will not be Putin. 
It will not be America. Israel is the most likely, in my opinion, nation to use a nuke. And that's because nobody can retaliate with nukes, first of all. But it's also because they are the only... You know, Russia talks about existential threats and shit. And yeah, they got cities built near borders and that kind of thing. Um, but they also have a vast expanse of land. Israel could very easily be on the verge of extinction in six months' time. If all forces rain down holy hell on Israel and Iran is included in that, you know... You, that's not a storm they're capable of weathering unless they take the Samson option. And you can look up what the Samson option is. So I believe that if Trump isn't elected, then our world affairs are, are destroyed, our economy is destroyed, and, and in the country we're going to have this unending stream of people flowing in who maybe maybe will decimate the nation in, uh, in the next four years, or maybe they won't. But there, there's no doubt we won't be better off. So it's more of a world stage concern and, and sort of economic concern and that kind of stuff with if Trump isn't elected that I want to prepare for. If Trump is elected, it's a, it's a short-term civil unrest and maybe long-term sort of uh, guerrilla-style discourse in the nation. You know what I mean? I don't think we'll be dealing with anything like a civil war. You know what I mean? I don't think that, that Republicans and right-wing people and conservative people would do much of anything. I don't believe that. I've seen too many times where things seemed like, okay, this is the last straw. You know, And, and that is because you have one group that wants chaos and one group that wants order. That's the, the gist of it. God help us all if it ever does turn into... If large groups of well-armed, well-trained right-wing conservatives do enter the fray, God help us all. Because these protests with their fires and their signs will look like daycare compared to the slaughter of police, uh, uh, first response, everything, you know, if, if it ever goes that way. Not to mention the protesters themselves, which many are young, confused people. But at the same time, you know, everybody's got limits. So basically, that's where my head is, folks. You know, that's exactly where my head is. That's when I send out this newsletter that's all about changing gears and, and focusing hard on three months worth of backup in every sense that you can. Financially, fuel, food, water, you know, all, all the stuff. Communications, first aid, school supplies, Short distance off grid communications within your community, um, all this stuff, you know, s centers around these two concepts. If Trump wins, there will be a vast civil unrest. I don't know where you live or who you are, or how that'll affect you, but chances are it will affect you. Um, and there may be other like other lingering issues, but I know that those first three months in the inauguration are going to be hell. You know, I know it. It's just a, a, a growth, a cancerous tumor that's been growing in the country since 2016 in those riots. And it's only gotten more efficient. It's only gotten worse and more effective and terrible. Um, that said... Oh, that's how he got in there. Anyway, that said, um, if Trump's not elected, I think the world stage continues to burn. I think China makes their move. I don't think anyone looks at Kamala Harris and who, whatever, you know, backwards vice president pick she she garners is going to make China, Russia, the Middle East go, oh, man, we better we we better back off. So then you have the whole world stage issue carrying on. You have, uh, you know, a, a government that's going to continue to print trillions of dollars every year and destroy the debt and destroy the dollar. And also on top of that, you know, one of the biggest ways that we can recover from that is fuel, is becoming a an absolute uh, dominating force in the selling of oil to the world and cheapening of, of fuel prices to, to lower prices on the average American and so forth. And uh, none of that can happen if 
if Kamala Harris is president because she's going to be saying electric and solar everything. I wanted to be as clear and succinct as possible with that. You know, I hope I didn't ramble too much. This is a this is sort of a special. You know what I mean? It's it's an important thing to me. When you guys reach out with questions, I like to be thorough and Jenny, I hope I did justice your question. I'm not saying anything on the Prepper Broadcasting Network to scare people. It's not my desire. Trust me. I don't... When I put something out like that, I don't get rich off of it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm selling a survival food bucket. And it's not like I sell enough memberships off of an email like this. Actually, I don't even have a link to membership. Yeah, I do. Um, But it's not like I'm selling memberships in a way that's really fundamentally changing my personal life with income. Uh... When I, when I put out a newsletter like this I spent a lot of time writing about prepping I spent a lot of time thinking about prepping In an end America And this is just the conclusion That I came to The people I talk to, the sources I have So on and so forth Has driven me into this Very clear course of action That I like to share with you guys Because I know for a lot of Americans That's what they're after We want a course of action We don't know what the hell to do They are saying I don't understand what is going on Which is why that rang so true to me Alright So I don't mean to blow up your weekend That's my take I hope you enjoyed it Alright Talk to you folks soon Please Support our sponsors, get the free newsletter, and consider membership this weekend so you can really you can really swim deep in the oceans of preparedness at pbnfamily.com. All right? Talk to you folks soon. What if I told you you could own land for $200 down and highly affordable monthly payments? Yourcheapland.com is your answer to bug out land hunting, recreation, and whatever else your uh, prepper mind can dream up. Yourcheapland.com has properties in Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Oklahoma, Arizona, Utah. Go to yourcheapland.com, check out the properties, use the promo code PBN, and get $100 off your purchase.